The coconut market is booming. More and more of us are drinking coconut water, using it on our skin. Even if you follow health crazes like Gwyneth Paltrow, using coconut oil to whiten your teeth. I even know someone who chews coconut to whiten her teeth. But the coconut's popularity is making it scarce, and prices have gone up rapidly in the past three years. Now we're also learning that the long-term outlook for coconuts is not so good. Let's look at more. With me is Vincent Johnson from Bioversity International. Well, the coconut, I didn't realise. I mean, it is becoming such a thing, a craze now. Everywhere you go, there seems to be coconut products. But I didn't realise it was under threat in this way, Vincent. Well, it's been under threat for a long time, actually. I mean, if you go back 30 years, um, lethal yellowing disease wiped out um, Caribbean production virtually. What can be done, then, to protect this humble nut? Well, uh, I suppose we need to do more research. Um, the main ways that you protect uh, coconuts from lethal yellowing disease is by disease surveillance, uh, replanting, um, some new molecular studies to look at why and how the disease is spread. It's mostly spread by insect vectors, plant hoppers. Are there any sort of coconut plantations in the world or areas of the world that are safe right now? Um, I wouldn't say so, no. Um, in fact, lethal yellowing disease is found um, in all three continents, Latin America, um, Africa and uh, the Asia-Pacific. The Asia-Pacific is actually the region of the world where most of the coconuts are produced, about 80%. What about uh, having, uh, you know, I know there are seed banks that exist to, to protect certain species. Can we not do the same with the coconut? Well, the problem with the coconut, as you know, it's very large and um, it's what they call recalcitrant. It germinates very quickly. So you can't put uh, coconuts into gene banks, but you can store... Because you would have to store the entire coconut, is that what you mean? That's right, yes. Whereas you can store the uh, embryos which you punch out from the bottom of the coconut where the eyes are... Um, in glass test tubes, in, in what they call in vitro gene banks. So that's one way. You can also store the pollen, cryopreserve the pollen. And we're looking at ways of freezing uh, coconut uh, germplasm as well. Are there places around the world where they are protecting the coconuts, like plantations, that, where um, they're just trying to preserve them and look after them? There are ex situ, so-called, because it's grown in different situations to where they occur, gene banks, where they plant many different varieties. We have uh, about 24 national gene banks and five international gene banks that protect, I would say, uh, the majority of uh, global coconut diversity. I mean, they're quite tricky, aren't they? They take a long time to grow. Presumably, you've got to climb to the top to do yes, the pollination, indeed. to watch the pollination or to observe that. That's they're, they're one of tricky. the problems, yes. Um, um, sometimes coconuts' lifespan is about 50 years. Um, there are two, two or three kinds of coconuts, dwarfs, which are quite manageable, and tall coconut palms, which grow in excess of 25 feet, and, or metres, rather, and then they can't be, you can't, can't easily climb them. So, Vincent, for people who are drinking coconut water or using some of these products, is that under threat? I mean, is there just going to become a time where there's not enough coconut to make all of these products? That's probably a bit dramatic to say that, but unless we work towards protecting the future of coconuts, then we might end up with less options in the future. And it's a kind of 40 to 50 year time frame we're talking about. So we need to act now to protect the diversity that we have mm. for the future, particularly with regard to climate change, where sea level rises are going to affect some of the diversity um, because, as you probably know, most coconuts grow on coastal areas and therefore are more vulnerable to sea level rises than some of the other crops that we grow. Benson, great to have you with us. Thanks so much I'm for I'm very glad. Us. Thank you.
An almost complete skeleton of a dodo is coming up for auction in Britain today for the first time in nearly 100 years. The auctioneers in Billinghurst, south of London, say fewer than 20 are in existence worldwide, making it rarer than a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Wonder what it will go for. See you soon for our next edition of GMT. Bye-bye.